the world can be a scary place full of undesirable people who carry out awful acts. We may never understand why it happens, but we can at least learn about them to know what humankind is capable of. And if these people are anything to go by, then it's a lot. From an army dropout killer to countrywide wars, here are 15 most dangerous people in the world. Number 15. Martin Ford Martin Ford is not a dangerous man because he's a serial killer or anything like that. He's not even a bad man. He's dangerous because if you were to get into a disagreement with him, you'd likely always come off second best. Martin is not called the Hulk or the Nightmare for no reason. The Birmingham, England-born man is a bodybuilder, fitness expert, and actor. He maintains a strict diet to build muscle, including white fish, green vegetables, chicken breasts, oats, and egg whites. This all helps in building the massive muscles you see on him today. Martin isn't just muscly, though. He's just huge in general. He's 6 feet 8 inches tall, weighs 286 pounds or 130 kilograms, and going to the gym is his hobby. Imagine exercising for fun. He does sound dangerous. If you haven't got the right genetics to become a top class bodybuilder. But if Martin looks familiar, it's probably not because you've seen him at your local gym or in a dark alley. He has acted in many popular films like Accident Man, Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and Red Con 1. Martin is basically a man of many talents, and probably not nearly as dangerous as he looks. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Paula Broadwell Ask the monthly American magazine called Wired, and they would tell you that Paula Broadwell is one of the 15 most dangerous people in the world. They said as much in an article back in 2012. He has put duty on our country and his service to the nation above his family. We think that's a little harsh, but we'll explain why they believe that's true. You'll soon form your own opinion and probably come to the conclusion that it's not all that accurate. They said she managed to bring down a CIA director, stall a top general's career, and send several federal agencies into a frenzy. When you hear that, you probably think she pushed a big red button of some importance. But all she did was have an extramarital affair with a retired four-star general, David Patrius, who was the director of the Central Intelligence Agency. She co-authored his biography, All In, The Education of General David Patrius, at the time that he was the International Security Assistance Force Commander. The FBI then discovered that she was having an affair with him, and he resigned as the CIA director when it all came to light. So she's being called dangerous because she managed to bring someone with a high ranking to their knees, but if I'm not mistaken, it takes two to tango, am I right? Number 13. Cody Wilson Cody Wilson looks like an everyday guy, and he is an everyday guy. That's what makes him quite dangerous. This one ordinary man has the potential to turn gun control on its head, and we don't think that's a good thing. He's responsible for manufacturing the very first functional 3D printed firearm. And it's a firearm you don't have to register while still operating within the guidelines of the law. That could spell disaster for gun law advocates and just everyday people who, you know, don't want to get shot. He and eight contractors work at 12 stations assembling all the hardware, like chip guards, couplings, bearings, and ball screw blocks. Our first really successful, like, step from our first test. He buys stocks, sights, and barrels online, but he creates the rest of the gun pieces with computer-aided design and 3D printing. Cody manages to exploit the law that states if the lower receiver is 80% complete when somebody acquires it, they can make the last cuts, attach it to other parts that they have purchased, and have an unlicensed gun. Now that is dangerous. The worst part? He has sold thousands of them. Number 12. Nicola Basilei Nicola Basilei is not a household name, but it really should be. 
An anti-Islam film he produced led to a considerable number of anti-American protests that resulted in several U.S. schools, businesses, and missions being set alight and dozens of people dying in the Middle East during protests. All the punishment he received was a year in prison and four years of supervised release for probation violations unrelated to the film he created. A judge in California handed down the sentence that actually stemmed from a fraud conviction in 2010. He had served nearly all of a 21-month jail sentence for it, which involved him opening around 60 bank accounts to carry out check fraud and using around a dozen aliases. But he didn't use his time in jail for good. Instead, he spent a lot of his time reading the Quran to find ways to criticize Islam. When he was released, he wasn't allowed to use computers or the internet for five years without first consulting his probation officer. Even though he didn't put his name on the film, U.S. authorities somehow discovered it was his, but didn't say whether he had posted it to the internet or not. Number 11. Ahmed Abu Katala in 2014, one of the most dangerous men, Ahmed Abu Katala, was captured and taken into custody after a successful secret U.S. military raid in Libya. Ahmed is the suspected ringleader of the 2012 raid on a U.S. diplomatic post in Benghazi, Libya, which resulted in the deaths of four Americans, including U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens. The operation went off without a hitch, and Ahmed was taken to a secure location outside of the country. At the time, President Barack Obama had said that when Americans are attacked, no matter how long it takes, they will find those responsible and bring them to justice. And they did. So what makes Ahmed Abu Katala so dangerous? Well, from the outside, it doesn't look like he is. He's a native Benghazi resident from eastern Libya and is a construction worker. However, he spent a long time in the notorious Abu Salim prison and founded a small militia during the anti-Gaddafi uprising. Even though he denies links to Al-Qaeda, he admires it. He also denied being involved in the U.S. embassy attack, but eyewitnesses placed him there. According to the U.S. State Department, he's also a senior leader in Ansar al-Sharia, which is an Islamist group. Number 10. Robert Charles Brown it's always awful hearing about the very dangerous people that still live in our society. So you'll be pleased to know that in the case of Robert Charles Brown, he's serving a life sentence in Colorado. Our streets are just a little bit safer as a result. Robert was born in Louisiana and was a high school dropout who joined the army. He served for around seven years before being dishonorably discharged for drug abuse. That doesn't make him dangerous, but his later murders do. Criminal experts believe he killed up to 49 women, but they can't be sure of the exact numbers. Authorities do say that he admitted to up to 49 murders from 1970 until 1995 when he was arrested. Robert says his first victim was a soldier in South Korea in 1970 before he went on to murder seven people in Texas, 17 in Louisiana, nine in Colorado, three in Mississippi, two each in New Mexico, Oklahoma, and California, five in Arkansas, and one in Washington State. If he is to be believed, he would be one of the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history. However, his arrest was only for the murder of Heather Dawn Church in 1991. In 2006, he then pleaded guilty to the murder of Rocia Del Piar Sperry. Number 9. Semyon Mogilevich the FBI is offering a $100,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest or capture of Semyon Mogilevich. They say he is armed and dangerous, but that sounds quite tame when you find out who this man actually is and what he's capable of. Simeon is considered the most dangerous mobster in the world, and he isn't called the Brainy Don for nothing. The Ukrainian-born man, who tips the scales at almost 300 pounds, has managed to commit some atrocious crimes, and all without being caught. He has a fortune in the billions of dollars, and you don't get that by being stupid. Some sources even reported that a Russian Secret Service member accused him of relying on Vladimir Putin to get him out of situations. He was then, coincidentally, poisoned to death. But we won't speculate on that. Simeon has his fingers in many pies, like drugs and weapon trafficking, contract murders, prostitution, extortion, and money laundering. But those are small fish. He also supposedly commits bank and tax fraud fraud, manipulates stocks, and owns oil companies and armament factories. Have you ever heard of a more dangerous man? Unlikely. 
Number 8. Abubakar Shekau Not a lot is known about the ruthless leader of Boko Haram called Abubakar Shekau, who has a $7 million bounty on his head. But what we do know about him shakes us to our very cores. He is sadistic, but orders others to carry out acts for him, and he operates mainly in the shadows. Except, of course, when he comes out every once in a while to record a video mocking the Nigerian military's supposed impotence. Or you are with the Obama. We don't even know his age, with the U.S. State Department listing it as either 1965, 1969, or 1975. Abu Bakr speaks several languages, except English because he rejects all things Western. He also uses several aliases, is a master of disguise, and a loner. He has just a few confidants and uses them to get his messages out to the masses. These things don't sound dangerous, but the worst is yet to come. His followers are responsible for killing thousands of people with no one spared. Police officers, students, churchgoers, and journalists were all victims of this man's orders under Boko Haram. He may even be getting more powerful by using Islam to recruit and radicalize. Number 7. Matteo Messina Denaro. We love a good true crime series, and fortunately, Netflix always has us covered. In 2020, World's Most Wanted was released, which looked at five of the most threatening offenders who still remain at large. Matteo Messina Denaro is one of them. Matteo is a Sicilian mafia boss and has been on the run since 1993. He is believed to have connections with the murders of around 50 people, which included car bomb attacks resulting in 10 people dying, including two prosecutors. Even though he's on the run, word on the street is that he is now the boss of the Sicilian mob world, and yet he still manages to evade capture. Matteo comes from an influential and respected mafia family. He learned to use a gun at the tender age of 14 and committed his first murder four years later. He really upgraded his crimes, though, since he is now wanted for his role in the terrorist campaign in Sicily in 1993. Authorities think that he may be hiding with either the Graviano or or Provenzano clans since he has a good relationship with them, yet he still remains at large. Number 6. Joseph Coney it won't take you long to realize that when someone's referred to as a brutal killer and a terrorist, they aren't a good person. Ugandan man Joseph Kony is wanted for war crimes and crimes against humanity, yet he has managed to escape capture for over 20 years. His rebel group, Lord's Resistance Army, is well known for abducting thousands of children to use as sex slaves and soldiers. He has ordered violent attacks, waged wars, and even brutalized northern Uganda citizens by burning their property, mutilating them, abducting them, and murdering them. Word on the street is that he's even captured women to become his wives. He has a number of children, and two of them, Ali and Salim, were sanctioned by the United States for their alleged role in LRA activities. Joseph describes himself as a freedom fighter, but has been responsible for thousands of deaths. He said it was necessary to kill his own people because, in his view, they had failed to support his cause. When he was interviewed in 2006 at his jungle base, he asserted that he was not the monster he was portrayed to be. Number 5. Ismael El Mayo Zambada Another person to appear on Netflix's World's Most Wanted documentary is Ismael El Mayo Zambada. Ismael is a Mexican kingpin and the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, which is perhaps one of the most powerful drug trafficking organizations in the United States and maybe even the world. Before he came to be the leader of the entire cartel, after two other significant players ended up dead and in jail, Ismael was responsible for overseeing trafficking of heroin and cocaine into U.S. cities by narco submarine, jet, ship, and train. He's accused of being a major stakeholder in such operations, which provide around $11 billion in earnings every year. Even though the FBI believes he's responsible for a range of crimes, he still hasn't been caught. He has kept a low profile all these years, but some people believe he might be hiding in the mountains of the Sinaloa region of Mexico. When interviewed in 2010, he said he'd consider suicide to avoid going to jail, even though he's unsure whether he'd have the courage to take his own life. Number 4. 
Omar Hassan al-Bashir in 2019, Sudan commenced investigations committed in the region of Darfur by members of the ousted former president Omar al-Bashir's regime. According to the United Nations, in conflicts between ethnic minority rebels and pro-government forces, around 300,000 people died, and about 2.5 million were displaced. When prosecutor Tagal Sir el-Habar arrived in Khartoum, he said they had launched an investigation into the crimes committed in Darfur from 2003 which were cases against the former regime officials tied to Omar Hassan al-Bashir. The International Criminal Court seeks him for his role in the conflicts. In 2009 and 2010, warrants for his arrest were ordered, relating to charges of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. The new transitional government in Sudan that came to power after protest movements toppled Omar said they wanted to establish peace in the areas affected by conflict. For the first of several cases against him, Omar was sentenced to two years' detention for corruption. He was also being investigated for the 1989 coup that brought him to power in the first place. This unfolding story is definitely one to keep an eye on. Number 3. Major General Qasem Soleimani a man that former President Donald Trump said was indirectly and directly responsible for millions of people's deaths is definitely someone you would describe as dangerous. Major General Qasem Soleimani, the most powerful military commander in Iraq, was killed at Baghdad Airport in a strike that Donald Trump had ordered. Under Qasem Soleimani's leadership, pro-Iranian militant groups had expanded their presence in Syria and Iran. He was also described as the second most powerful figure in Iran, but also also as a terrorist by the U.S. since they had been responsible for the deaths of hundreds of U.S. personnel. Once Qasem was killed, Donald Trump tweeted to say that Qasem had killed or badly wounded thousands of Americans and was plotting to kill many more. Qasem Soleimani has been killed. He also said that he should have been taken out many years ago and that while Iran will never properly admit it, Qasem was both hated and feared. The Pentagon released a more eloquent statement that said that the strike aimed to deter future Iranian attack plans since Qasem had been developing strategies to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq. Number 2. Ibrahim al Asiri. Ibrahim al Asiri, who also goes by the alias Abu Saleh, is a very wanted man. According to authorities, he made bombs that have been used in several high-profile operations in the Arabian Peninsula by Al-Qaeda since 2009. He supposedly built the device that his little brother used in an assassination attempt on a deputy interior minister in Saudi Arabia, along with an underwear bomb a Nigerian man tried to detonate on a plane over the United States on Christmas Day. Some sources say that bombs found in packages on planes in the UK and Dubai were also of Ibrahim's making. They all had one thing in common, a potent explosive called pentaerythritol tetranitrate. But he didn't stop there. In 2012, Ibrahim was believed to have built an improved version of his previous failed underwear bomb for a Saudi-recruited double agent on a US-bound flight. Bombs are clearly his talent, but he has others which make him incredibly dangerous. He is an expert in making poison and is also well-versed in martial arts. According to a BBC article, Ibrahim may be hiding in the mountainous governorates of Marib and Shabwa with the former aide of Osama bin Laden. Number 1. Mokhtar Bel Mokhtar Mokhtar Bel Mokhtar was a former Al-Qaeda senior figure who left to form his own militia. He is responsible for the 2013 attack on the Inamena's gas plant in Algeria, where he took 800 people hostage and killed 40. Most of those 40 were foreigners, with three from America and six Britons. The US filed terror charges against Mokhtar, and he was believed to be a threat to Western interests. Two years after his gas plant attack, he was killed in a U.S. airstrike with two F-15 aircraft in Ajdabiya, Libya. Typically, drone strikes are the standard method, but this strike was seen as successful and his death was confirmed. 
According to a Pentagon spokesperson, Mokhtar has a long history of leading terrorist activities in Northwest Africa. The spokesperson also said he had maintained his personal allegiance to Al-Qaeda. There's no denying that Mokhtar was a dangerous man who needed to be captured, and fast. He fought against Soviet forces in the 1980s in Afghanistan and went on to lead al murabatun an Islamist military group that attacked international and local forces in Mali. Some of these stories gave me chills. Who knew that such people could actually walk and live among us? It's a scary thought. Does someone infamous or dangerous live near you? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!